Okay, good morning everybody. Welcome to the Skills Stage. My name's Terry Hodgetts. I've been working at Aston University for a long, long, long time. Uh, and I'm here today to talk about degree apprenticeships, how they work, what they mean, uh, how they operate, some of the challenges of dealing with them. But to start with, how many degree apprenticeship vacancies are there currently in the market? So, as of yesterday, there are 258 degree apprenticeship vacancies on the Find an Apprenticeship service uh, that's available on gov.uk. That's not the only source of degree apprenticeship jobs, and I'll talk about some of the other routes to find them later on. There's no deadline for, for degree apprenticeship vacancies. When we're recruiting to normal degree programs, then applicants go through the UCAS process. They've got a deadline in January to get all of their materials together and get their applications in. The thing about degree apprenticeships is that employers are recruiting all the time. They're taking people on board throughout the year. And in terms of our degree apprenticeship programs, yes, most of our apprentices start in September or October at the normal sort of start date of the academic year. But we have start dates in November, in January, and in April as well. So it's a running process all of the time. Lots and lots of opportunities out there. 77% of apprentices stay with their employer after they've completed their program. So in terms of thinking about it in the context of job security, in the context of opportunity, you're working for an employer, you're building your reputation, you're getting to know the people. By the end of the apprenticeship program, they know you, you know them, you've got a relationship, you're established, and you can start to move on and build that career. And one of the most interesting things that normally gets people excited is that number. Once you've completed a degree apprenticeship, oftentimes you're earning in excess of 30,000 pounds per year. And what we're finding in the marketplace is that graduates who've completed a degree apprenticeship are generally earning more than graduates who've done a full-time degree because they've got that experience under their belt. They're a more valuable proposition for employers. So it's really valuable for you as a route and a pathway to build your career. And finally, can I do a degree apprenticeship to become a solicitor? You can do a degree apprenticeship to, for any number of different things. And this is just a small list of some of the apprenticeships that are available, including the odd misprint. Proofreader isn't an apprenticeship as far as I'm aware, but that's just the way these things go. There are currently 119 degree apprenticeship standards that have been approved by the government. So there's a wealth of opportunity and just about any career you can imagine you can pursue through the degree apprenticeship route. The key thing about a degree apprenticeship to bear in mind is that you get the best of both worlds. As an apprentice, you're not paying your, your fees. You're not paying 9,250 pounds a year. Those fees are covered by your employer under the apprentice levy. And you still get a full honours degree at the end of it. There are still some people who think, oh, well, an apprenticeship isn't as good as a proper degree. An apprenticeship is a proper degree. It's to the same standards, the same level of rigor. It's every bit the same level of quality and the same amount of power. But you also get that professional experience, and this is so, so valuable. I can't stress this enough. If I think back to 1937 or so, when I graduated from university, I went out into the world and... In the first year in a job, I learned more than I'd learned in the whole time on my degree. The beauty of the degree apprenticeship is you're doing that learning as you go along. You're learning the theoretical stuff, the tools, the models, the content, the, the theories, the concepts, and you're applying them and making use of them and making sense of them straight away. And the value of that to an employer is immeasurable. That's what they're looking for in the marketplace today. And you're earning money while you learn. Apprenticeship salaries vary enormously, depending on the employer and their policies, but you're earning money, you're not paying student fees, you come out without debt at the end of the process, you've got bags of experience, you're a more attractive proposition for employers, and you're likely to have a higher salary as a degree apprenticeship graduate than you would have as a standard graduate. Apart from that, there's no reason to do a degree apprenticeship at all, really. It's, you know, take your, make your choice. This is the bit where I have to briefly promote Aston because it's in my contract. If I don't say how brilliant we are, I get in trouble. So we've got a 
a wide range of degree apprenticeship programs. These are the level six programs that we're currently offering. And in total, we have around 1,300 apprentices. It'll soon be around the 1,550 mark in the next couple of months from, in total, 380 different employers, ranging from the very largest employers to small businesses. So if you're the kind of person who wants to work for a small business and make your mark, that's an opportunity. If you want to work for one of the biggest names in the industry, you can do that as well and get in on the ground floor with a really big and, and, and prestigious employer. And the range of business sectors, as you can see, all sorts of different sectors that we're operating with in aerospace, IT, banking, engineering. So the opportunities to start that career and to start on that path are huge for anybody thinking about a degree apprenticeship. Now, this is just the Aston story. We've got, as I say, 1,300 apprentices, 380 employers. BCU are here today. They've got countless apprentices and countless employers they work with. Manchester Met up north, the universities in London, across the country, there is a wealth of opportunity available to do degree apprenticeships. This is just one example. Philip did the digital technology solutions degree apprenticeship with us while he was working for Camp Gemini. What's interesting with Philip is that his A-levels were all in the arts. He was doing performance and music and was thinking about pursuing an arts career. And while he was doing his A-levels, he enrolled online at a product called Code Academy, like an online self-development process to start learning about IT and coding and building web pages and that sort of thing. And while he was doing his stuff on Code Academy, there was a little banner advert that came up on the right-hand side of his screen promoting degree apprenticeships at Cap Gemini. And he thought, hmm, that's interesting. I'll take a look at that. And he ended up going and joining Cap Gemini, building a career, going through the process. And as he's saying here, he's processed mu progressed much faster through his, his career already than he would have done through any other route. So this is somebody who wasn't even thinking of becoming a technology specialist, who at the age of 17 or so suddenly started to just explore it a little bit and suddenly thought, oh, this is really interesting and really cool. And now he's flying. And his career trajectory has transformed over the last few years as a result. Really, really powerful. Now, this is where I have to give you the bad news. The degree apprenticeship is hard work. You're doing a full degree whilst you're doing a full-time job. So it's a lot of work, it needs a lot of effort, you've got to organize yourself and plan and be quite committed. And there's a lot of activities that go on. And this is just a typical representation of the way that might work. So you'll be doing, roughly speaking, two days per term on campus, getting some face-to-face -face teaching. The rest of the time, You'll be attending webinars, there'll be regular scheduled webinars, there'll be lots of online learning resources to support you and help you. And of course, through the virtual learning environment, in our case it's Blackboard, you've got access to library resources, online resources, videos and all the rest of it as you go through. You do exams and assessments, in most cases now it's assessments, you're not sitting down and doing exams and having books and phones taken away from you. It'll be practical essays and work-based assessments. And you'll be doing a fair amount of self-study. You'll be supported through that self-study as you go. First of all, support from a coach. Every apprentice on a program at Aston University gets a skills coach allocated to them. So a member of the Aston staff is supporting you one-to-one -one throughout your journey. They're helping you plan your off-the-job training. They're helping you build a portfolio of evidence. They're helping you work with your employer to make sure you're getting the support and the development that you need. Your employer, at the same time, will be giving you support from a mentor and a line manager. So they're engaging with you as well. So the employer and the provider together are working between them to help you through that journey. You've got a wealth of online resources that are available to you. You've got an expectation and a requirement under the regulations that you should be doing a minimum of six hours per week of off-the-job learning. So the rules state that you have to be supported to be doing study while you're working. Now that off-the-job learning can be a variety of different things. It doesn't mean just attending lectures and webinars. It doesn't mean just reading books. Let's say that you're doing a digital technology solutions degree apprenticeship. 
and as part of that job, your employer asks you to attend an online seminar talking about cybersecurity. Well, if you spend two hours on an online seminar talking about cybersecurity, you can probably link that back to the development you're undertaking in your degree apprenticeship, and that counts as off-the-job learning for the apprenticeship. So it gets us into the habit of thinking about what we're learning while we're working at the same time. And that's a critical part of the way that apprenticeships work. The entry requirements vary according to the program. In most cases, we're looking for three Cs, BCC at A level. But it's important to bear in mind the entry requirements are also driven by the employer because it's the employer making the decision to hire you, not the university making the decision to give you a place on the program. So it's about presenting yourself to the employer. As you go through this program, it's a requirement by the end of an apprenticeship for every apprentice that they have level two maths and English. So that's GCSE maths and English, which I'm hoping for most of this audience won't be an issue. But other than that, it's about presenting yourself effectively to the employer, showing them your personality, showing them your interests, showing them your capabilities to get in there. Because the recruitment process is through the employer, not through the university or college. So the application process is to focus on the opportunities that are out there. Use the internet. Start looking at the Find an Apprenticeship service on the website. Just use Google. Look at a Digger Apprenticeship jobs and search for them on Indeed and Read and all of the other job posting websites that there are out there. There's a host of opportunities. Once you get into the system, generally most employers will give you some kind of test up front in terms of skills and maths and English. They may well invite you to an interview. They might invite you to an assessment center where they'll bring you in for a day and set some exercises and activities and observe you interacting with your colleagues and completing tasks. A lot of people that I speak to get concerned about assessment centers and, are, and they're a bit nervous about being under that sort of scrutiny. My advice is just go there and be yourself. Don't try and put an act on, don't try and pretend to be anything different. Engage in the activities, work with your colleagues and use that as an opportunity to demonstrate your skills, your capabilities, your creativity, your ability to work with other people. That's what employers are looking for. A lot of applicants for degree apprenticeships hedge their bets. They put their application into UCAS, and so they get on the list for full-time degrees, and they apply for degree apprenticeships with employers at the same time. That's a smart strategy, especially if you're not sure. There's no problem with doing that at all. You can apply for as many things as you like. It's up to the employers to persuade you to make the decision to go with them. So they're selling themselves to you as much as you're selling yourself to them in this process. I've covered much of this already about you know, the assessment centers and all the rest of it. Every employer has a different process. Every employer does these things a different way. The Find an Apprenticeship service, as I say, it's got well in excess of 200 vacancies on the website as of yesterday and it's constantly being updated and constantly changed. Lots of employers are advertising their vacancies there. And a lot of employers are recruiting to multiple vacancies. So it's not just one job. They'll be recruiting 10 or 15 at a time into these programs. But there are also the other sources. Google really is your friend and there's loads and loads of routes out there. And lots of employers set up their own website specifically for recruitment. So if you're sitting there thinking, there's a company I'd really like to work for, go do your research, look at their website, look at their recruitment pages, find out how they talk about themselves, find out the kind of people they employ, the kind of skills they're looking for, and start to think about how you can position yourself and sell yourself to them effectively to open those doors for you. As a final summary, the difference between a degree apprenticeship and a traditional degree. There's not a lot of difference except for a few things, I think. First of all, a degree apprenticeship is no debt, which is a big plus, and you're getting huge amounts of experience as you go through it. A traditional degree is going to give you more university life and student life. A lot of people like that. You won't get the opportunity to do a lot of that through a degree apprenticeship, 
but you do get some opportunities for socialization and networking and there is some fun. A general degree tends to be generic, it's preparing you for a variety of different routes. A degree of apprenticeship is specifically targeted at a job role or an area of skill and knowledge. So they tend to be more focused and specific in terms of the learning journey. But the key points for me, you're getting paid a salary, you're getting several years of work experience, and this really positions you in the job market, not just for today, for the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. It's giving you that start point on the ladder. Actually, it's getting you a few steps up the rungs of that ladder right at the very beginning and giving you an advantage. So, that's enough from me. Have we got any questions, any comments or any thoughts in the room? I normally just dull people into a sense of stupor and they all go, oh great, it's over, but that's fine. Yes, yeah, sorry. That, yeah. Sorry. What sort of things do students need to do to stand out? Think about what you're doing at the moment uh, in your studies. What societies are you involved in? Are you working in the sixth form society? Do you do any volunteering work? Are there any sort of um, groups or activities? Are you get, supporting charities? Are you getting involved in community activities? Are you, you know, any of that sort of thing that's showing something more than just the academic development is one of the key things. A lot of people fall into the trap of thinking, in order to apply, I just need to show people how academically strong I am. What employers are looking for is what you can bring to the table, how you can add that picture. There's a lot of people with academic skills, but if you can show them how you work in teams, how you are creative, how you come up with ideas, how you make a difference in your community, how you support your colleagues, how you, you know, contribute, to your school community, to your college community, to your local community, and the differences you can make, that makes a big difference. What are your interests? What are your hobbies? How do they add to you as a person? What have you learned from it? What do you find fun in these hobbies? Why do you value them so much? Use these things to give a, a window on your personality and your contribution. That will help you to make the difference. Okay? Did I have a hand up here? Sorry. If you're doing A-levels, when would be a good time to apply? All the time is the simple answer. Um, the UCAS process for full-time degrees, you've got the deadline in January and, that, and I'm sure you've got tutors and careers advisors beating you over the head with a stick, reminding you and saying you need to make sure that you do that. The uh, employers are recruiting for apprenticeship jobs all the time. So the Find an Apprenticeship Service, the, there's a different number of vacancies almost every day. Different employers are recruiting in different employment cycles. <coughs> the majority are probably recruiting between February, March and May is the sort of main activity period, but that's not the only activity period. Keep your eyes open. And if they do have a sort of, a, a, you know, a web page that invites you to express interest, or that, you know, that, that uh, gives you the opportunity to just give them your email address so you're on a mailing list for them to send out information about upcoming vacancies and that sort of thing. Get yourself on the list, start to make contact. If they're running events, if they're holding open days, get down there, get your face in front of them. That's the best way to get that going. But in terms of the best time, it is all the time, literally. Yes? The question is, if you're doing an apprenticeship, are you doing the full university degree course? or something sort of kind of cut down or truncated to fit it in, yeah? Unfortunately, you're doing the full university degree course. So, it's a lot of work. Um, you know, a typical undergraduate degree is the equivalent of 3,600 hours of study over the duration of the program. Now, depending on the degree, 
so, some degree apprenticeships are delivered over three years. Some of them are delivered over up to five years. It depends on the program, it depends on the nature of the study and the activity. Quite a few of the five-year programs, there's a lot of work-based activity and professional practice that's part of that process. Uh, the three-year degrees, it's much more about, for want of a better term, hoovering up the information and then thinking about how to apply it. But in all cases, you've got the support from a coach within the university to support you. You've got the, the program team in the university that understand the challenges of this and how difficult it is to do it. You've got the employer supporting you through that journey as well. So it is hard work, but there's a lot of support to help you to do it. But I'll say this again, because there are people out there in the market that say, oh, a degree apprenticeship isn't a real degree. It is. It's absolutely the same degree, the same qualification, the same standards, the same learning objectives, the same examination boards, the same quality and oversight and all the rest of it. There is absolutely no difference between a degree apprenticeship and a degree. It's just the mode of study. In terms of the delivery of the program, some, some of the providers will organize their delivery, so degree apprentices are studying alongside full-time degree students. But for most programs, you'll be studying separately. You'll be a separate group because the journey is different, the challenges are different, and it's just better to do that. Again, you know, for our programs, it's two days per term that they're on campus. So you've got two days of intensive teaching a typical undergraduate degree, you're doing three hours on a Monday morning, three hours on a Tuesday afternoon, the rest of the time you're in the library. It's, it's a different process and a different rhythm. Whereas for a degree apprenticeship, it's an intensive teaching period, and then there's webinars and library support around it. So for most of the programs, and certainly for our programs, you're studying as a separate degree apprenticeship group, and that part of the experience of working together and studying together is important. There are other providers I know that will kind of shoehorn apprentices in alongside full-time students. I wouldn't recommend it, if I'm honest. Any more? Is that a hand waving right at the back? Hold on. I'll come to you in a minute. There was one that was just first. Okay, a traditional degree is three years. If you do it via a degree apprenticeship, how long does it take? That varies between in some cases, it's still three years. So for our Chartered Manager degree, they still complete that program in three years. Uh, if you do our audiology degree apprenticeship, that's a five-year program. Digital Technology Solutions is four and a half. Most of the programs are a little bit or somewhat longer, so it does vary, but it's generally between three and five years. Yep. And then there was one more. Yeah, so yeah, the apprenticeship route is separate from the full-time degree route. So all of the teaching, any seminars, any webinars, it is a separate group that's studying together. I, th I do think that's important because we need to recognize that the people in the room have got full-time jobs. We need to recognize that those pressures and the time pressures and the environment that they're working within. And we also need to help them to understand how to link what we're teaching them back to the workplace. So it's a, it's a different teaching kind of environment in a way. So we do keep them separate. You do get our options to sort of access library facilities and you know there will be events and additional workshops and seminars available that if you're around you could still go and attend, but the teaching for the program tends to be delivered separately. Yeah, so does the work that you're doing connect back to what you're being taught in the classroom, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. That's the whole purpose of it. That's what degree apprenticeships are for. That's why the employers got together in their trailblazer groups and designed the standard and said, this is what we want you to teach them. So they absolutely do connect back. 
the most important point to bear in mind is that the employer has a responsibility to make sure they're supporting you as an apprentice to give you the opportunities to connect what you're learning back to work. So, for example, I was talking to an applicant the other day who's going to be joining us shortly and mentioned the fact that when he's doing the marketing module on his chartered manager program, he needs to talk to his boss and get an opportunity to spend a bit of time maybe shadowing the people in the marketing department, looking at their campaigns, their social media activities, understanding how that works and then connecting that real world experience back to the, the theories and tools that are being taught to them. So absolutely, they have to connect. I'm conscious that I might run over. There's time probably for one more. And I just quickly saw two hands. I'll try and do both. This hand was just first, sorry. If you decide an apprenticeship, if you start an apprenticeship and decide it's not for you, can you drop it? Of course you can. Um, you need to have the conversation with the employer. You've got a contract of employment and they've employed you on an apprenticeship contract. So, you know, I'd encourage you to think very carefully, but we do have apprentices who change route. We have apprentices who change programs as they go through. They're not necessarily committed and locked into that journey. But I would encourage anybody to think very carefully and make sure that it's the right decision before they start as best they can, yeah? Yeah. So, yeah, clarification on the interviewing process. Thank you. I probably did skip over that a little bit. The employers do the interviews. The employers decide to recruit the apprentice. It's their decision. They, have, they are going to engage with the apprentice with a contract of employment. They're bringing them on board as an employee. So that's entirely owned by the employer. From the university's perspective, there are two issues we bear in mind. The first is the kind of the minimum entry requirements for the program and making sure that the, the apprentice is eligible for our program. Sometimes we do that through an interview process. Oftentimes we do it through a document check. In all cases, it's a formality. We are ticking the box. The employer is making the decision. It's not up to us to select the apprentice. It's up to the employer to, to select the employee. And then the employer selects the provider that they send the employee to. Okay? I think I should stop now or else the people coming next are going to be running late. Thanks for your time. Enjoy the rest of the day and good luck on your apprenticeship journeys.